Let's go out in this rainy, wet forest. You can hear the rain. Everything's wet. Let me show you how I get a fire going in those conditions. See how I don't have to baton or anything? There we go. Look at that. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm going to talk about knife batoning for the purpose of splitting wood. Why it's done, why I think it's done in knife review videos, and why I don't think it's actually that that useful uh, of a of a you know a capability of a knife in a real wilderness situation. I'm starting this video in my backyard for a reason because a lot of knife review videos you see are done in people's backyards, which is really not a bushcraft survival situation. Uh, so I'm gonna end this video. I'm gonna take you out into the woods in a couple minutes here. You know, and I've picked today for a particular reason. It's actually raining right now. It's a light rain right now, but it's been raining all night. It started raining yesterday afternoon. And I mean, at this time of year, it rains almost every other day anyway. So the woods are wet. <laughs> so it's, it's a hard day to make a fire. So I mean, often the argument is made that you need to be able to baton wood so you can get into it, so you can get into the dry stuff on the inside, right? And this is not a hard skill. You get the knife started, and then you, you hit the part that's sticking out the other side, right? Until you're... Oh, I've got a tippy piece of wood here. There we go. Right, until you're through. Okay, and then as, you know, once you've got that started, you can make it into something finer. Right, and from there you can, you know, make a make a feather stick and do all that sort of fine stuff, right? For 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 fire for fire lighting, right? You make really fine, make really fine curls like that, depending on your skill level, right? You make the really fine curls, make the feather stick, and this is considered an essential bushcraft and, and survival skill, right? I'm sure this isn't the greatest feather stick ever made. I'm just doing this for an example. So often when a, a knife is under review, it's, it's tested for its ability to do something like this. You know, you have to have a really good knife to do all of this stuff in, in a sense, because it has to be able to take the beading and it has to be, I have a fine enough edge to do something like this, right? But if you'll notice, I'm in my backyard for a reason. I've got a piece of wood that, you know, was cut to length with a chainsaw. Right? If you're in a wilderness survival situation, you're probably not going to have wood like this. You're going to have what's available in the wilderness, not perfectly cut pieces of wood. Also, I got a nice piece of wood with no knots or no anything on it, right? This is just a nice piece of maple, I think, right? You're probably not going to have those sort of, it's just perfectly straight grain. This is ideal for splitting, right? I'm in my backyard. All these things are available to me. Right? In a wilderness situation, you don't have perfectly cut stuff. You've got branches that are broken off of trees. Maybe you've got a folding saw um, that you can use to cut something like this. But that's an awful lot of work to get fine stuff to start fires with. And it doesn't make a lot of sense in an actual forest, a wild forest, because you don't need to do this in an actual wild forest. Let me take you out into a forest and show you. <laughs> Come along. <laughs> All right, so now I'm back like a kilometer into the woods. It's pouring rain, and it's been raining for about 24 hours. Yesterday I went on a fishing trip with my son. We were out in a lake, and sometime around one o'clock in the afternoon, the wind whipped up and the weather, the sun went away, and it started getting wavy, and it started getting rainy, and all. And we were soaked by the time we got back to the car, and we were glad to get home by the time we got home. So I mean, this is the kind of scenario that these knife practitioners, these survival experts talk about where they say you're out and you got to make a fire and it's raining, right? Maybe you've flipped your canoe and fallen in and it's really cold. It's about six degrees Celsius outside today, so it's not a day you'd want to go for a swim. Or you're just trying to cross a creek or a river and you, you misgauge things, you slip and you fall and you're soaked. And let's say you're hours away from the road and uh, or way back in the woods and you got to get a fire you're going, you got to get warm and everything's wet. And this is the scenario that is the impetus for this, this idea that you need some sort of super knife that can be pounded, can be baton, can be treated badly, and will stand up to all of that and still cut well and all that sort of stuff. 
um, for, for getting in the wood, for splitting the wood, to making feather sticks and all that sort of stuff. All right, so where I'm gonna come at this, I mean, this is, this is a $20, $30 knife, okay? So this is not what most knife review salesmen <laughs> are talking about. Let's go out in this rainy, wet forest. You can hear the rain, it's hitting the camera. Everything's wet. And uh, let me show you how I get a fire going in those conditions, knowing the ecology here. And for those of you that are going to guess, oh, you're just gonna use a pile of birch bark like you always do, today I'm gonna, not gonna do that. I'm gonna pretend <laughs> like I'm in a situation where there's no birch bark, okay? Because that is basically the solution when everything's wet like this, you either have to find something extraordinarily dry that'll take a spark, you know, from, from, a, from a ferro rod, right? Or you need a chemical substance that will make a flame from a spark from a ferro rod. Sure, you should have, I've got matches here, I got lighter in my pocket, you should always have that with you. I mean, this scenario that the knife review expert is sort of playing to is that you're the most hopeless outdoors person there is, and you've all you've gone out in the woods with is a knife and a ferro rod. You don't have a saw, right? You don't have a, a backup, good quality pocket knife with a you know, saw and many options like that. All you have is a knife and a ferro rod. You got nothing else, which has never happened to me. I mean, someone would have to literally have to strip me bare and hand them to me for me to be in a situation like that. Anyway, this is the situation we're in and everything's soaked, so I can't really find a material dry enough to take a spark. Yes, I can split a tree open conceivably, and inside that tree there's something dry enough to do that, but I'll tell you, when it's like this, when it's this rainy, when it's this wet, it's very difficult to find wood that's dry enough to take a spark. Even if you fell a tree and you split it open, you make feather sticks and all that sort of stuff, there's a degree of moisture in the wood just from the, it's being outside, right? And even though you can find sort of locations in the woods where it's relatively dry, um, if it's, you know, the only, the only good dry wood you're gonna find are dead standing trees. And basically they are as dry as the humidity of the air, right? Well, it's like 99% humidity today. Everything's wet inside and out, right? Even if I put a piece of paper under an umbrella, that would get damp just from the humidity in the air, okay? So let me show you what I do in a situation like this where everything's soaked, okay? Let's go. All right, so step one is to find a dead tree that's reasonably dry that I can knock over. Oh, so what do we got here? That one seems a bit, doesn't seem dry. Here's another dead tree here. I mean, they're all over the place here. That's the thing about a forest, a natural forest. You've got dead trees and live trees. That one seems okay, but maybe we've got a better one. That one I can just tell is damp by looking at it. Uh, there's a couple over there, but they're way out in the open. What I want is a dead tree that's sort of in amongst other trees. And it's a little bit protected so that I know that it doesn't get a lot of rain. Uh, what do we got here? You see here, we're in a wild forest. It's not picked over, it's not a campground, it's not a backyard. Right? It's just a wild forest. So all the materials are here all the time. Nobody's using anything back here because there's nobody back here <laughs> other than animals. All right, here's the kind of tree I'm looking for. I mean, I don't know if it's the kind of tree I'm looking for, but it's a rotten tree, it's dead, it's not that big. Uh, sometimes, sometimes these sorts of things are hollowed out in the center and squirrels have made a home in them. Sometimes they're not. That is an ant house. It's full of ants, which can be good stuff. I don't really like messing with ants. Thankfully, they're not fire ants, I don't think. Um, anyway, that seems a bit damp. Well, yeah, it still seems a bit damp to me, despite it being an ant house. Maybe this core. That's reasonably dry, um, but still not ideal. Uh, it's also the case here that everything I find, if I set it down for five minutes, if it goes from being dry to wet, <laughs> I don't have like an ideal setup here. Let's see if we can find another, find something better. 
What about that part of the tree? Yeah, she's pretty damp. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty damp. Let's see what we got over here. That one's pretty sound, not rotten enough. See, I'm not wandering far though, right? There, now that's, you can just hear that. It's dry inside. See how I don't have to baton anything? All I had to do was walk 10, 20 feet from where I wanted to set up my fire and find something with some dryness. Right? This is pretty dry. Right? It's giving me wood. Every quarter acre out here, there's at least one tree. Look how. Huh? That is so dry, there's dust on the inside, okay? Literally dust on the inside. Well, the trick is to get this, get a fire made before this gets so rained on that it isn't dust anymore. Might even have a bit of, well, it's got a bit of a smell to it. Not exactly fat wood, but something resembling that. And if you, if you're hedging all your, staking all your, you know, betting your life on finding fat wood in the woods, good luck. Uh, you probably will not find it when you need it. <laughs> but dead trees, if you're in a real forest, <laughs> you're probably going to find them. All right, let's go find a place out of the weather to, uh, to light this fire. All right, so I found a place now where I can light a fire underneath a tree. It's not perfect, uh, perfectly out of the rain, but it's okay. I've got uh, my coat over that dry stuff. That we uh, found earlier. See, I put my hand here so I can't. This knife can only go so far, right? You push this in with your hand behind the knife. It can't go any further than your hand. Okay, for those of you, I'm pushing towards myself, put my hands over top, so it's reasonably safe. Anyway, I can bend that out. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a thing to collect resin with, and the thing to collect it on. Now, in a lot of survival videos, you'll see guys. Um, collect resin from blisters and I'm using the resin because it's it's chemical right it's it's a flammable chemical that I can find in the woods so it doesn't matter so much how wet things are it matters but um, this is basically the thing you use in this scenario if you can't find birch bark and you can't get anything bone dry and you're trying to light a fight with a fire uh, trying to light a fire with a spark right resins where it's at so you need a thing to put the resin on right and then you need a pointy thing to, uh, to puncture the blisters. If you use your knife to gather resin from blisters, um, what happens is that when you're making sparks with your knife, with a ferro rod, they uh, stick to your knife and don't fall into the, don't fall onto, you know, the fluffy stuff you're trying to get started, which is not what you want. All right, so you just make a pointy stick and you have a flat stick like this to, to wipe the stuff onto. All right, this tree's got some blisters. At least it looks like like it does, yeah. All right, so I'm guessing this is a fir tree. It could be a porcelain boy spruce. I'm not not an expert on these things. I'd have to double check, but there's plenty of plenty of resin in this tree. You don't want this stuff getting rained on. It, it just works better if it's just resin and it's not resin plus water. <laughs> of course, it stands to reason, right? Anyway, trying to gather as much of this as we can. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of crap in it. If anything, that, that crap can help support the flame, almost like a like a candle wick, right? Right, so the, the exercise, you know, not getting this all on camera because I don't have a cameraman. I'm just working my way up the tree, trying to get as much of this onto the stick as I can, right? Trying to make it as big, big of a mess as I can. Right, getting all kinds of that onto the stick. 
and it stands to reason that the more you can keep that out of the rain the better it and i'm getting the odd raindrop falling right on it <laughs> what are the odds right but it, it happens so i mean the only way to deal with that is to just get more and more and more but it's really raining good today right, this is one of those scenarios you get your coat off protecting your dry stuff because you're all in right you have to get a fire going you cannot fail Okay, and you've got faith in your skills because you're out practicing in all weather, right? So that you have the solution when you're in the situation, right? Or maybe you're the guy that, that changes it for everyone. You want to be that guy or that gal, right? You want to be the person helping everyone. At least I do. All right, let's see if we can get a fire going with this, see if we got enough. All right, so I'm going to put some of this on the ground, just so I got a reasonably dry surface to work on, right? It's very hard to make a fire off a wet surface. But it's pretty dry in there. I'm going to put some of this dry, dusty stuff on the resin. All right. Just to give it something... To work with and I don't know how much pitch or resins in this uh, dry stuff I guess we'll find out as we go here okay I'm covering my stuff back up all right so I got I got that I'll break this here up again see I'm not making feather sticks I'm not doing any of that you can do that but I mean I'm in a rush here the weather's bad everything's getting rained on while I'm messing around here I know once I get a fire of size, the rain won't matter, right? But for right now, the rain really matters. It's, been, it's making everything wet and unlightable, which is not what I want. All right, so I'm trying to work quick and trying to also simultaneously be my own cameraman. That's good and dry, man, that's dry. That is nice and dry. Okay. You've got my barrel rod. All right, let's see what we can do here. See if we can get that lit. Shoot, I put it out. No, I didn't. Oh, I almost put it out. Breaking cardinal rule here, setting my knife down, but I got a flame here, so I'm gonna work with it. See if I can coax that into something. Okay. All right, got my ferro rod put away so I don't lose it. Set your knife down, you set your ferro rod down, you never see him again. That is a rule of thumb. All right, now I'm trying to... And I would have prepared more of this kindling before lighting, but there's so much rain right now that uh, there's a risk of it getting rained on. <laughs> so I almost have to sort of process the wood. Basically, if I was sitting around making ferro or making feather sticks, they'd be getting rained on, you know, and uh, not very effective. Okay, you can see we're getting, we got flame here. Trying not to kill it. Trying to feed it just enough so that it's drying out the wood, igniting the wood. And not being smothered. Move the camera away up there for a sec so you can see what I see. 
All right, so it seems a bit smoky, but if you look inside, there's flame in there, right? All right, there's flame. See the flame? All right, so our resin's burning. And what we're hoping for is that it gets this other stuff, which has humidity, has dampness, but it gets it going. And uh, hoping we don't have to blow on it. <laughs> you just get a sense of, I mean, you saw how dry that was, but even though it's dry wood, right, it's still got a degree of humidity because it's been raining all night and it's raining for, you know, a day or more. So nothing wants to burn, right? But that is starting to behave like it wants to burn, right? We got a bit of life here, right? The bigger the fire gets, the more irresistible it becomes because it just, just develops its own, it develops so much heat and so much energy that it burns, it dries out whatever you put on top of it. You get a big enough fire, you can put like, you know, I mean, when you're initially getting a fire going, you have to use the logs that are dead standing to get it, get it going. But once a fire really starts going, you can, you can use uh, stuff laying on the ground, just about anything to get it going, right? Okay. Now, I don't know if we've lost our flame or not. I think we have. I'm going to give this a blow. It's important that not to blow too soon because, you know, you don't have enough ember, you don't have enough sort of black and, and sort of glowing red wood. Um, so hopefully the amount of resin you've collected is enough to make enough of the fine stuff you've broken up black and maybe glowing red a little bit. But now you can see we got this kind of going, right? So I'm going to put the camera back on a tripod so I can work the fire a bit. See, you see how we did all of this without feather sticks, without anything like that, right? Just with being clever, understanding the materials we're working with, understanding that certain trees get hollowed out. Basically a tree dies, and woodpeckers peck holes in it, and then squirrels make homes in it. I'm going to give this another blow. There we go. Look at that. Right? I have enough here to accomplish that. Now, when it's a bit damp, I don't usually have to blow on fires, but it's when it's a bit damp, uh, sometimes you have to add a bit of air to the equation to, to get things going, right? I got more wood over here. I can continue to add and add and add. Right, and just coax this into a big fire. I'm not going to do that because I'm just out for the afternoon and I'm just making a point, right? I'm basically going to keep tending this until I've got a fire that looks like it's going to maintain itself. I'm sure the fire is getting rained on. But there's a point where you've got enough fire happening in the fire and enough heat happening in the fire that it's, it just becomes irresistible. And, and you've got, you know, a sort of roof over the fire like this, so it's keeping rain. You've got a center core of heat on the inside. And it is, the rain's touching the top here, but it's not touching the center, right? And the center's drying everything out. Now, as we go along here, we can get bigger and bigger materials, of course. For another blow. All right, so it looks like we're going to be okay now, and it looks like we've got a fire that we can add and build and build and build and build, right? We had to use some tricks here. I even had to take my jacket off to cover the dry materials I get from the dead tree because I, I could just I can just tell by the amount of rain we have right now that if I just left it laying out for 10 minutes, it would get so damp that it really wouldn't light at all. And even now, it's still protesting a bit. Right, but I mean, we've got fire. We Basically, there's no problem I can't solve from this point of an onward, right? You just keep adding and adding. Go back to the tree I got this from get some more, there's a couple more dead trees around here, start knocking those down, smashing them up with my feet and so on, right? Getting that all going. 
know, ideally you've got a tarp you're doing on this under, you've got an enormous, enormous tree that's really dry underneath. Of course, there's a forest fire risk of that. Um, but anyway, the point is, let's say we had a tiny little tarp, you know, the kind of thing you'd have in your a little backpack, like a, a six by eight tarp, just enough to get out of the weather, which is something you might bring along in a backpack for a fishing trip, just for emergencies, right? Underneath a tarp like that, with a little fire like this, where the, the tarp's barely over the fire, but mostly over you, right? This fire, it's got enough happening in it now where it'll keep itself going, even in the rain, unless you have an extraordinary rain, right? Um, and uh, and keep going. We had to use a few, few old tricks. We used the resin. That would have been a thousand times easier to do this with birch bark, something like that. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to sort of show the principle of it all because birch bark is basically a pretty cheap date right you throw enough birch bark under anything and you can light it right it's another good thing to know right <laughs> i mean with your bare hands and a tiny pocket knife and uh and a ferro rod uh, as long as you can find enough birch bark which you can harvest with a bit with a with a pocket knife um I mean, you can throw almost anything under that you get a big enough fierce enough ball of fire happening right but let's just pretend that we're pretending here in this scenario that we don't have any of that and uh, we're able to get a fire going despite a little bit of protesting from the damp wood but we can get a fire going right uh and you know I, if i wasn't filming i wouldn't be stopping to talk right now i'd be i'd be furiously adding to this fire maintaining it working on it but you can see how it just it wants to burn now right we don't have any real issues in keeping this going all this fire wants now is more fuel so long roundabout way of making the point that you know, the survival situation you may find yourself in, where you have to make a fire and there's not a lot of fire making materials around. And thinking that your ability to baton and split wood and make feather sticks is the solution. And, you know, I'm out here today in a, in a really lousy situation, right? It's five, six degrees Celsius. Uh, it's the kind of situation where you can get hypothermia, you can die of exposure in this temperature because it's raining and raining and raining and it's just not good. Once you get all wet, you know, it's kind of game over, right? Um, in that situation, I don't need to split and all that sort of stuff to get the wood in a situation where it will burn and maintain a fire in rain, in reasonably heavy rain today, right? Um, it's about being, um, being clever and understanding the ecosystem where you are and the materials it has, even the behavior of the animals, because you can find something that a squirrel's been in that's been hollowed out, or maybe a, a tree that's been turned into an ant nest or something like that, right? All those kinds of things you can use to your advantage. Um, understanding the, uh, the, the resin from the fir tree, from uh, some types of spruce trees, uh, all that sort of stuff. Understanding how to use those materials, how to coax the fire into flame, how fire behaves, how damp wood behaves when it's lighting, how it smolders for a while and you have to let it smolder. You don't start blowing on it right away, right? Let that little flame from the resin get some heat darken the wood, you know, darken the fine stuff you're trying to light, let the resin fire dry out the, the kindling, right? Enough that when you finally do go for it and blow, and the, basically at the point where I blew on this fire, the resin had stopped burning and everything was smoldering. And if I didn't blow on it on that stage, I would have lost the fire, most likely, unless a gust of wind came or maybe there was another gob of resin in there somewhere that might've ignited, I don't know. But at the point where I burned on, at the point where I just elected to blow on this and to get it going, the resin was basically used up. I would have had to start all over again, get more resin, do it all over again, which is what you have to do in that situation. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.